Good morning, friends. Just over 25 years ago, I came to my first yearly meeting and I ministered. You can imagine the fear, the shaking, the quaking as I was driven to my feet. I was sitting somewhere up there just below what used to be the balcony. And I said something like, I've been called. I don't know what I've been called to, but I know that I have to let go of what I'm doing now. What I was doing was working in publishing. I was a literary agent. I was fed up with the celebrity culture, the bottom line mentality, and I'd wanted to let go of it for some time. But I had no idea what I was going to do, so I carried on until faith came upon me. I don't say that I found faith because it certainly found me. In the wake of trauma, the breakup of my marriage, the next relationship, and my daughter being diagnosed with a chronic illness, I was cracked open and able to discern another dimension. And then I realized that I didn't need to know what I was going to be doing, that I would be shown. And I wondered why it had taken all this time to understand how to lead my life. I could let, let go of the need to know. So that was faith, but why Quakers? I come from a multi-faith background. My father was an Anglican, my mother was a non-practicing Jew, my brother was an atheist. Uh, I was baptized as an Anglican, and then when I was five, my father converted to Roman Catholicism. So from the age of five, I was the only Anglican in the family, and I was a very devout little girl. Uh, and until the age of 18, when my faith went underground, So when faith came back about 20 years later, it came as a complete surprise. I found that every time I went into a church to look at the architecture or for a christening, I would burst into tears. I had no idea what was going on, but I had no choice but to follow it up. So I went to various churches, but didn't find anything that spoke to me. And I remembered seeing a sign outside the Quaker Meeting House in St. Martin's Lane in London and thought I'll give it a try. I didn't know anything, uh, anything much about Quakers, although actually there had been signposts along the way, but I hadn't been ready to see them. So I went to my first meeting and I found peace. I didn't speak to anybody for a while. I'm quite a sociable person, but I didn't want my social self to trample on the green shoots of something so tender and new. So I crept in and I rushed out. And I borrowed books from the library and I couldn't believe what I was reading. I didn't know religion could be like this. And I thought, this is me. I was being given permission to be myself more than permission, I was required to be myself. Not an easy thing, as we all know. When I came to Quakers, I was not looking for a community, but I found one. After I'd been attending for about six months, our meeting held a weekend away, a residential weekend away. And the theme was belonging. And I was full of disdain. I thought, belonging, don't believe in it, don't want to believe, no, don't want to belong. But after a weekend, sleeping under the same roof as 30 others, going for walks together, talking, eating together, I sat on Sunday morning and with my eyes shut, mentally went round the room and thought, I know everyone in this room. 
and a wave of belonging came over me. And I realized not only did I belong, but that I'd always wanted to. And when I came back, I applied for membership. But it was not just a nurturing community. It was an empowering one. As a young child, a young woman, I had been very idealistic, very upset at the famine that was going on in parts of Africa, but had been led to believe, as many people are, that poverty and injustice are just too great for us to make a difference. But now I was meeting people who were making a difference, in small local ways maybe, but it opened up the possibility that maybe there was something I could do. And then you won't be surprised to hear I got asked to do things. And the first thing I got asked to do was to coordinate the tea runs for homeless people that various meetings in London were holding. I'd never volunteered in my life. I knew nothing about tea runs. So I thought I'd better go on one. And I was full of preconceptions, sure that I was going to be sneered at as a middle-class do-gooder or banged over the head by a druggie with a bottle. But of course, ni neither of those things happened. And instead of the embarrassment and guilt at passing a bundle in a doorway, the moment I offered a cup of tea or coffee and said, do you take sugar? It was the beginning of a human relationship. And I realized in that moment that that person could be me and that we're all one and there's no such thing as the other. A few weeks before I sold my agency with no idea of what I was going to do, I got a phone call. I heard that Quaker Social Action had been offered a big church to turn into a community center, and would I like to do it? I knew nothing about community centers or the East End where this was, but somebody thought I could do it, and I said yes, and it changed my life. So all very dramatic. It was as if the spirit was giving me a kick up the backside saying, come on, you've taken long enough, get on with it. And it was the beginning of several years of relationship with people living on the margins, both here and abroad. And I learned so much. I found so often that people who have least have most to teach us. It's only through dashed preconceptions, it seems, that I learn. So one thing led to another, often in unexpected ways. I've been, abled, I've been enabled by people's leaps of faith, by seeming connections, synchronicities, grace, glimpses of a greater whole. But none of these have been smooth transitions. It's only with hindsight that I can see the path. And often it takes a long time. Another crucial lesson for me has been about waiting. Not an easy thing for an impatient human being. But waiting has become a core part of for me, what the, the spiritual journey is for me. The Christian mystic Simone Weil's most famous book is called Waiting on God. The spirit's life, the spirit's way is not ours. The spirit's timing is not ours. So waiting, faithfulness, trust, these are the things that matter. And 
waiting on God is what we do in our meetings for worship. Whatever the word God means to you, waiting on God, waiting for guidance, it's what we do in our worship and in our lives. Friends, these gifts of faith and the Quaker way have brought me so much in such an unexpected way. If someone had told me 30 years ago that any of the things that happened in the last 25 would happen, I would never have believed them. 